Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. Built back in 1930 for just $750, the Vermilion Cenotaph has a long history. It's a site to remember 83 soldiers who left the area and never came home. But plans to develop the park where the Cenotaph sits has some local residents up in arms. Kelsey Bloxham brings us that story. Kathy Walters is on a mission. The Vermilion Cenotaph, an area that pays tribute to fallen war heroes, could potentially become neighbors with a commercial building. And that has Walters speaking out to save the park. There needs to be some respect shown for the, the cenotaph space and the park and putting another building jutting up next to it, you know, 15 feet away, just isn't respectful. During the summer, the town was approached by a developer looking to build a 9,000 square foot commercial building. A suggestion was put forward to offer the land west of the cenotaph. The town says that would only use up one third of the space. We've looked at a number of, we've looked at all options to be honest with you. This wasn't a, a short term process. We have an, a number of empty spots, but you know, uh, size, size uh, was an issue in terms of the size of the lot. Some of the buildings, vacant buildings um, were, were, were too small. Uh, and if there was a building that was, you know, we'd like to leave our main street for retail. Uh, not for office space. We really don't need commercial development here. Even though the town needs to grow and we need other things to happen, some things are more important than money. The Royal Canadian Legion branch in Vermilion has established a committee to work with the town. And just last week, a vote was held to determine whether to relocate the cenotaph if the deal goes forward and the space becomes inadequate. We would be if it became necessary. You know, and uh, we are certainly prepared to give it a home on the Legion property. There have been uh, several uh, other ideas put forward if the thing, if the cenotaph has to move. But for this Legion member, it's a decision he's very much opposed to. I'll go with what the democracy says in my branch. But personally, I think it's a mistake to even consider the idea of moving it. The words, if you break faith with us who die, we will not sleep. And I think that's a, a very point words. Um, you know. Town Council has postponed any decision on development until the next council meeting on November 20th. As for Kathy, she hopes by speaking out, it shows town officials they won't go down without a fight. Kelsey Bloxham, New Cap News. Changes are on the way near a major highway on the south side of Lloydminster. The speed limit coming into the city is being dropped to make the road safer. The, the major change on Highway 17 is going down from 100 because coming through the south of the city is 100, and then down to 80, and then down to 50 before you hit the 12th Street. The speed zone changes are taking place because of new development to better serve the community and to keep the roads safe. The city recently found out it has full jurisdiction on establishing speed zones due to annexation of land in South Lloydminster. A long-standing member of our city council over the past three decades is being recognized for his dedication to our community. Herb Flieger was awarded the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal. Elise Cox has the story. To present Herb with the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal for service to community that is unparalleled. To mark the 60th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II's accession to the throne, Herb Flieger was among 60,000 Canadians who were recognized for their contributions to fellow citizens. The 60 medals given are a way to honour Her Majesty for her service to this country and at the same time honour Canadians who possess the same giving characteristics. Well, it's a great honour on behalf of FCM and on behalf of the Queen and, uh, and our city to be able to recognize somebody who's made th that big a contribution in the last 33 years. Flieger was nominated for the award for his 32 years of service to the border city through his involvement on city council and the changes he has brought through his dedication. I had some um, pet projects, so to speak, that I wanted to see through to fruition. And I was involved with other things as a council, maybe not necessarily directly, 
but there's been a lot of changes. Congratulations. In his acceptance speech, Herb thanked his family for their support and patience with his time commitments over the years. Obviously, I took a lot of time away from my family, that I could have been at home. And if you're working and you're doing counsel, that, that's even more. So it, uh, it's very important that you thank those that you take away from. And now, after his recent retirement from City Council, Flieger is happy to have the medal to remind him of all the hard work he has contributed, but is looking forward to spending more time with his family. I'll miss it, but there are other things in life too. Elise Cox, Newcap News. Mayor Jeff Mullick. Locally, Mayor Jeff Mulligan, MS founder Rose Brassard, and Dewberry Mayor Hedley Dennell also received medals. Well, voter turnout sharply dropped at this fall's municipal election compared to the numbers of those who came out to the polls back in 2009. Close to 1,300 less residents cast their ballot, and now the city is predicting why. Officials say the wild winter storm played a role in low turnout, as well as no mayoral race. That people are saying, um, I usually come out and vote when I want to vote change. If I'm not voting for change, then I don't really have to be as committed to voting, which is wrong again because voter complacency might mean you get the wrong outcome. This year, just under 3,000 ballots were cast compared to over 4,000 back in 2009.